Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike Green. I'm one of the owners of 1A Auto. I want to help you save time and money repairing and maintaining your vehicle. I'm going to use my 20 plus years experience restoring and repairing cars and trucks like this to show you the correct way to install parts from 1AAuto.com. The right parts installed correctly. That's going to save you time and money. Thank you and enjoy the video. In this video, we're going to show you an oil change on this uh, O2 GMC Sierra 2500HD. It has the 6 liter motor, um, 6 liter gas motor. The tools you'll need are a 15 millimeter wrench, uh, maybe a hammer if you don't have a big wrench, and then also you'll need a uh, oil filter wrench and a rag and obviously oil and oil filter. Okay, so I have the truck up on a lift and I have the tires off for a totally different purpose. The great thing about these trucks is that you can uh, do an oil change um, with them just sitting on the ground because they're so high up. You want to go underneath and here you can see your oil drain plug. I'm going to kind of come around and obviously I have it up on the lift to make it a lot easier to film. Um, so underneath, uh, the two things you basically need are your drain plug there, it's a 15 millimeter bolt, and your oil filter right there. Okay, so I've got my 15 millimeter wrench, and at the dealer they must have put this on pretty tight because um, I'm using a hammer to just kind of get the wrench going a little bit. A longer socket and uh, ratchet handle would be fine. Uh, one note, uh, I always do an oil change when the engine is warm, and so in that case you just need to be careful. Uh, that pipe that's right to the right of my hand is the exhaust pipe, um, so if you're changing the oil on a warm engine, um, you need to be very careful of that exhaust pipe and the reason I do that is because when the oil is warmer it flows better and so you can get more of the old oil out. Uh, so as you're um, unscrewing the plug here uh, it gets to a point you can see the oil starting to flow where you kind of hold the oil in. Obviously I have a drain pan underneath here um, and there goes the oil. Uh, another good note is on these trucks if you're if you're right underneath it have it on a little bit of a uh, incline with the front of the truck facing up that'll allow you to get a little more oil out and so we'll let this drain for a little bit okay so I've let the oil drain for a while uh, now I'm gonna reinsert the plug and notice I have my wrench in my hand I'm gonna tighten it back up even though I may pull it out again in a little bit to see if any more oil comes out but every time you put that plug in make it a habit to tighten it up that way if you um, don't happen to do what you were thinking you were going to do, you have a tight plug in there. Basically I always make it a habit of any time I put a plug in I always tighten it up. And now I've got my oil filter wrench, uh, which I apologize I didn't get a very good shot of this, but you wrap the oil filter or wrench around the filter, get it turning a little bit, and then you can just um, turn the oil filter off. As you can see, as you're doing that, oil will start flowing out. Uh, you can let it flow for a little bit, and I'll kind of fast forward here. And once you have the filter pretty much all the way off, then it just drops down, and you put it right in your catch pan, and let the rest of that oil drain out for a little bit. Use a lint-free rag or a paper towel, um, and wipe off any excess oil that's on the oil filter uh, base. Okay, now you want to take some oil, put it on your finger, um, and coat the oil filter gasket with a layer of new oil. Once the filter is coated, you put it up in, um, get it onto the base, and just kind of lightly turn it. Uh, it. Once it catches, it should go on nice and easy and spin right on. You can see there it spins right on, and then go until it's tight with your hand and then you're going to want to grab your oil filter wrench and tighten it another half to three quarters of a turn. Get our 15 millimeter wrench again and make sure that that plug is tight. And now here, I'm just going to take the dipstick out and wipe it off just get any of that dirty oil that's on it off. 
Um, and then we'll take the oil fill cap off and on this truck it says right on it 5W30. Uh, you can also check the manual. Your owner's manual should tell you the engine oil type. Okay, now right where that cap was, you're going to add in five quarts of oil and then check the level. Okay, so check the oil by making sure the dips are clean, insert it all the way into the tube, and then take it out. And you can't really tell the level probably from this shot, but you can see that it's up to basically the fill line. So now we'll start up the truck, make sure we have good oil pressure, and fill up the oil filter. Right here's your oil gauge. You start up the truck, and after a few seconds, the oil pressure will come up. And let it run for a few seconds, and then you can shut it down. Okay, check the oil one more time, and you should find now it's about a quart low because the oil flowed into the oil filter. And add another quart, and on this truck, uh, adding the other quart brought it to just below. Um, top full I guess or just below the maximum so we left it at uh, just a little bit low because we didn't feel like opening up another quart and putting it in but if you wanted to you could top it off um, but that's basically it then just uh, I just suggest r drive your truck for a hundred miles or so and check the oil again we hope this helps you out brought to you by www.1aauto.com your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet Please feel free to call us toll free 888-844-3393. We're the company that's here for you on the internet and in person.